Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I'm in Eastern Brain County catching up with Tyler McBlain of McBlain Farms. Sir, how's it going? Good today, and how are you doing? I'm all right. It's cold outside, it's yeah. winter, and uh, this is the day that we get to talk about farm trials, farm plots. You and your father, Barry, do so much of this. You farm down here. Um, want to talk about your, your, your strategy there, but hey, before we get to that, give us a snapshot of the operation. Okay, so I, we farm in um, Eastern Brant County, be our home base. I farm with my father um, and my mom and my wife. Uh, we are uh, no-till soybeans and wheat, uh, strip-till corn, and play with a little bit of oats. Uh, we farm predominantly heavy clay, but we do have some lighter soils to the south and to, a little to the north as well. Uh, we are strong believers. We use a lot of cover crops and do a lot of trials. So Tyler, let's talk farm trials. And as, as our friend Peter Johnson likes to say, there are no uh, mistakes in agriculture, only test plots. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and you and your father do so much of that. Talk about, I guess, uh, I guess the, your commitment to uh, farm trials and you know, uh, you know, how many trials and, and, and why are you so you know, committed to it? Yeah. So background, I guess the commitment, we'll start with the commitment part first. Um, I used to shadow my grandfather. My grandfather was a strong believer that you're, never stop learning. He was a pioneer in some different things in the area with no-till, um, and he was always trying new things. Um, my father followed his footsteps doing the same, so I've just taken it one step further and made it a lot more work for my guys by doing a lot more trials. Um, we have trials pretty well in every field. Um, on an average year, we have strip trials, and that's replicated trials. There's 100 plus plots of uh, trialing different things, whether it's population, fertility, we do a lot of work with biologicals the last couple of years, um, fungicides, and also variety and hybrid. So all these trials, Tyler, um, you know, specifically for this farm, a lot of variability. You know, not every field is the same, shall we say, and you're trying yeah. to learn every field. Um, from the perspective of, of learnings, you know, what have you sort of taken away? What, is, what are some of the key learnings you've taken away from the trials over the years? So what we've tried to build it on is our farm is different than every other farm. So you're we need to figure out what works on our farm. Um, we're with the, between strip till, no till, heavy clay. Not every farm is in that situation, so we need to figure out what works for us. Um, we've found a lot of things don't, but this is how we can figure out what works for us and versus what works outside our county on different soil types or in different areas, different climates. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, one of the key here is varieties. You really yes. know how to position varieties. Now. Correct. Yes. So we. Again, with, we'll pick on the heavy clay and no-till, the two things. There's certain varieties of soybeans that do not like clay, do not like no-till, don't like both. So we need to figure out what works for that. Um, and sometimes some of the research done outside the area says X variety works very well, but we bring it here into this situation and it does not. So we need to figure out where to position things. Um, corn being the same thing with the strip till, cover crops, we're splitting our nitrogen, Y drops, the whole systems approach, figure out what hybrids respond best for that as well, yeah, versus yeah. It, there's certain ones that respond better in different situations. Yeah. Done a lot of work on fertility as well, eh? Yes, so being that we're strip tillers for corn, we do a lot of work with our fertility. Um, it's all variable rate program, and it's field by field changing based on testing. Um, again, our clay responds differently than our lighter grounds to the south in Norfolk County. Mm. Now, hey, let's, uh, this is a soybean school, so yep. we're going to talk soybeans. Um, okay. uh, earlier this summer, you, uh, you talked about you know, a, a plot you wanted to, you wanted to compare solid seeded soybeans to 30 inch rows, and there was a, a lot of enthusiasm on Twitter, people yep. will follow you on Twitter, because a lot of guys want to know the answer here. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about this. I mean, this, this story is really, a, I, I guess, the, the, the trial and tribulation of the farm trial, but there's still lots to learn. Yes. So, Started out with great intentions this spring. Um, Mother Nature meant we had to change it a little bit. Um, so we were able to, we planted the headlands in the, in the small parts of a field with the solid seed beans. We planted the meat of the field on 30 inch rows. We strip tilled the whole field, even where we did solid seed it, just to take that variability of the fertilizer out using a soybean blend fertilizer. Um, at the end of the day, <laughs> it, I should go back. It was really neat watching them grow. Um, 30 inch beans, everyone emerges versus our solid seeded no-till. You know, we 
do lose some. We did change the population. The 30 inch beans were planted 140 versus the solid seed were 170,000 just, but at the end of the day, what the results, the solid seed beans out yielded the 30 inch beans. Um, the trial wasn't perfect. Just the way the day went, we couldn't put strip it across the field. It was just block planted. Um, but those solids uh, around yeah. the outside actually yeah. outyielded those 30 inch rows. Correct. In the uh, even, with, even with some tree effect. Correct, with tree effect, definitely. Yeah. And then we have the farm also right next door, which planted the same day, same variety. Only difference was was the crop was corn, no tilling corn stalks versus the 30 inch beans were um, soybeans on soybeans, and it even outyielded even more. Yeah. Now so, what's interesting about this, I mean, you, you say the data's not yeah, perfect, you're, no. gonna, you're gonna try it again. Correct. But you learn some other things here as well, right? You can plant soybeans and corn at the same time. Correct, and that's where we've played with numbers there, and it's hard to shut down our corn planter to go plant soybeans or wait planting to plant our soybeans because we're still planting corn. So versus having both rigs going, we can plant both at the same time. So what's that worth? And we you can't really put a dollar on that. Yeah. And you learned about uh, strip tilt as well, where, where that can fit here, yeah. where, where it doesn't need to be. Right? Exactly, yeah, and then, you know, in this case, we did strip till this field, planted the beans, but right over the fence, our own farm, we, it was just a broadcast fertilizer ahead of the drill, and I get, the yield there was above those 30 inch beans, yeah. and so, it's not perfect, the data, but yeah. it did show us something. So you learned a lot? In 2024, uh, it's now it's time to hatch new ideas. Mm -hmm. um, what's the plan for 2025? Uh, you know, you know, what do you think you'll be uh, running trials on this year? Okay. So st we're still waiting to hear back from the companies we do work for um, what they would like to see. Uh, some of the things I know we will be working with is still playing with these biologicals, trying to figure out the fit for them, see where they work. Um, we are going to be going forward with a lot more, playing a lot more with fungicides and adjectives to our fungicides in corn for, as everyone's well aware of, tar spot. Um, and then even in soybeans as well, we do seeing response in soybeans most of the time, but want to make that 100% of the time. So trying to figure out how we can, where that fit is. Um, carrying on with variety and hybrid trials, a lot of population stuff we're going to be working mm. with as well. I want a quick uh, quick question uh, yeah. on tar spot. Uh, mm -hmm. This year, um, you mentioned fungicide, just a little aside on corn. Yeah. Uh, you saw some good response on your fungicide. Yeah. Yes, um, still going through all the raw data, trying to, but on a low, our response was in the 20s, and we're going to be our highs in plus 50. Plus um, 50 bushels an acre. Exactly, and in some of the higher stuff was in areas we hadn't really seen tar spot in the past. So Todd, a final question. You talked about, you know, a hundred plots, you know, all mm -hmm. obviously with some replications in there. Um, every year, you know, you, it, it takes a lot of work to yep. do some good plots and some, a, lot, a lot of luck and, and a lot of things to yep. happen for you. But, you know, um, tell us, you know, from your thoughts, you know, the payoff, you know, yep. does it pay for you guys? I know you've learned a lot about yep. this firm and, you know, yep. how to effectively manage it. So not every plot pays, but at the end of the day, we are figuring what does work for us and what doesn't. And so, yes, there, at the end of the day, there is an ROI to all this. It's just figuring out what works and what doesn't. Um, and we do it, some of this we're doing also just for fun. We, this is what we enjoy doing. This is what keeps us excited to go out to the field, to go scout fields too, to go see what's going on on a tough year. We can still find some happiness in going out there and enjoying looking at what's going on. So, yeah, it, yeah that's a little piece that you can't put a dollar on, but at the end of the day, the ROI is the, that's the number one. That's the bottom line. Well, hey, yeah. um, always great to have you uh, yeah. here on the Soybean School and on Real, Real Agriculture. We appreciate uh, your time yeah. and uh, we'll be watching next year. Yeah, well, good luck and stay warm going home. We will. <laughs>